Hi, welcome to Steed Steed. I'm Julie Steed and this is the Practical Machinist Machine Shop Tour. I'll show you what we do in here. Okay, so the reason that we, uh, we were doing this practical machining machine shop tour is mainly to show people what we do in this tiny space, how we go from the raw product right to the finished product in a small footprint. Um, but also to let people know that you, know, you can start with anything and you can build whatever you want if you work hard enough. Um, the other thing that I was really interested in showing you guys is the chip management system that we've come up with for our shop because we're a very chip heavy shop. So maybe that will help you guys to manage your own shops as well. So we build uh, exhaust manifolds for mostly the Cummins diesel market. It's a revolutionary way to make manifolds different to anything else that's on the market. And we go from the raw material to the completely finished product and out of the door right here in the shop. Basically, the uh, manifold is made from mild steel, but it's machined in two halves so that we have some control over the direction of the runners inside. The design uh, capabilities are much higher when you can design that way. Um, they're machined in two halves and then welded together, and then the uh, turbo flange and the head flanges are also machined and then welded on. Yeah, we started in a little carport in Calgary on the side of the house. Uh, the, uh, the building was so small that Lane couldn't actually stand up in it to, to clear the way, so we've come a long way. How big is the shop now? 6,000 square feet. Uh, we have uh, 10 CNC machines in here and a robot welder, and at the moment we're fully staffed. So. And then uh, we have some of the machines are completely just purposed for one, one process. So, for example, this machine here just makes the turbo flanges, and it will do that all day long laying customized vices and fixtures so that we can run really long uh, run times on the machines to get the very most we can out of each machine. So the three machines that we've got are all purpose for head flanges and turbo flanges. Yeah. So uh, the next stage after the, the components are all beautifully machined in our CNC centers is to go to welding. So I'll show you that next. So the, the welders use jigs to line everything up beautifully and properly because that's paramount obviously. And then they weld the two halves together and then they weld on the turbo flange and the uh, head flanges and any EGT um, bungs or anything that need to be added to each one. Each manifold is made to order pretty much so some of them are quite specific with what people need for their particular application. So this is where the welding gets done and then from that we're going to go to sandblasting. Lane was a machinist already. He was a machinist already and that's how we got to emigrate because they, the Canada needed machinists. And he and his buddy were building uh, stock cars and stuff. So he started making his own components. He was making intakes and things like that. Um, and then he realized there was a big market there. So he's like, hey, I could actually combine my hobby with the cars and the uh, machining that I know. So he actually patented that first design for the way that the manifolds are built. He did that pattern by himself. Very clever man. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, grinding. That's right. I said sandblasting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when the welders have done their magic work, then it comes into our uh, grinding room and then our staff gently and very carefully, um, they'll take a die grinder and just smooth the transition between the head flanges and the actual body of the manifold, just to ensure that the flow for the manifold when it's on the engine is perfect. So they'll do that on both sides, on the turbo side and on the head flange side. And then when they're happy with what they've got and they've examined everything, it goes to sandblasting and then to painting. When the parts, the components are finished, we just bring them in. This is like a holding place for the welders to come and select the parts that they need for, for creating each particular order. Yeah, it's very, very difficult to juggle jobs to make sure the machines are doing all the, amount, the, the right work for us. Um, that's quite a challenge, but I have an excellent supervisor here for that. That's his job. I don't have to worry about that, but you're right. Um, we have to make sure that the welders have got plenty of components to, to start welding together for us. Manifolds are sandblasted before the ceramic coating is applied. 
it had, we need a really good surface for it to adhere to. Um, they get pre-baked before that to take off any oils that are accumulating during the process of machining, you know, with the coolant. So that we heat them up, we get all the, the uh, coolant off, and then we sandblast them, and then they're ready for painting. Want to see my painting room? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the spray booth. They just take the, uh, they hold, hook the manifolds up and spray them one at a time so that they can get really nice, even coverage. It's a two-part system we use. It's a Techline product, um, siloxide, and the finish we use is satin black. That's kind of our signature. We've always used that one. High temperature coating, it gets baked on in the oven here, and uh, then that's the last step. And once it's cool, it's ready to be boxed and sent out. Yeah, let's go and see the packing room. So um, this is a packing room. This is where everything leaves from for the shop. It's just, I, I know I keep saying it, but it's amazing to me that this whole product starts and finishes all in one place. And it's all in, in one Canadian shop, so we like that. <laughs> so yeah, this is one that we're going to be shipping out, but I kept it back just to show you guys what kind of finish it looks like. I don't know if you can get in and have a look there. I'm just going to move the sticker out of the way so you can see it. So we, we decided to mount them all on boards just because we were getting so many damaged in shipping that uh, we had to come up with a solution to that. So there, every single manifold that leaves is bolted on a board. And uh, you can see that that protects the coating beautifully. Nothing gets dropped or dinged. We can't have anything like that happening. Um, and the uh, turbo flange is always protected by extra styrofoam. And then, yep, the hardware that comes in, depending on the manifold, we send different uh, kinds of hardware for the, for the customer at the other end. Try and, if we can, we try and throw in a nice little free gift. This one's a lanyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We do also do um, manifolds for the C15, the Caterpillar uh, application as well. So that on the big rigs, um, that market is definitely kicking off for us. We're super busy with those. So these are the uh, the uh, Caterpillar C15 manifolds I was talking about. These are so durable. These manifolds and everything that we make comes with a lifetime warranty too. So. The truckers love them, they put them on and then they don't have to worry about it. It lowers the engine temperatures and it doesn't warp and it's just, they produce really nice results for the truckers. So I can see that becoming a really big thing for us going forward too. Um, but because uh, the aesthetics aren't quite as important in a product like this, then all of the welding for these is done on the robot welder. Um, it's way, way quicker, way more efficient and I can have one operator whip through 20 in no time at all. With, uh, with TIG welding, everybody get, they get that nice stack of dimes finish. I'm sure you know what that looks like. Um, but with the robot welder, it's not as pronounced at all. It's a robot, so it's very uniform. There's no real, uh, the aesthetic is different. But I think in a big rig like that, it, you know, it doesn't seem to matter as much. But with the Cummins diesel, the race manifolds we send out, those guys are really expecting something that looks just like it was purposely built for them. If someone ever was doing a custom big rig, would you? Customer. For sure. Yeah, we could do whatever they want. We actually sometimes we have to put uh, extra EGT bungs on there because they race these in Quebec. The, the racing guys are getting hold of our products now and they're enjoying uh, having them customized so that they can check their engine temperatures really closely on each runner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Everybody's involved. I, when uh, we first got the robot world, Elaine and Patrick, our son, worked together on the best method for actually utilizing that robot. It's got some, they've made some modifications so that it's uh, a lot more uh, user friendly. Um, and our daughter helps with the marketing side of stuff and social media. And yeah, it's been a really good family thing to do. We always, uh, we, we buy the materials pre-cut. Uh, got a good deal from the supplier to do it that way it cuts down on our cut times and then we have blanks that are really ready to load straight into the machine so uh, this is the the starting uh, point the the steel and uh, they go from this point to well this one's almost finished it's not quite finished and you can imagine how many chips are created in between those two points in time
So we mentioned, I mentioned earlier that uh, we are a big chip producing shop just because of the way that we make our manifolds. And uh, we had a problem that we encountered when we first bought this machine. That we bought it with an auger option, which we thought was going to manage the chips beautifully. But what we found was the chips get stuck to the side of the cabinet and the base. And um, so what happened was that uh, Lane came up with a really good solution to this. And I'm going to show you that now because that's really exciting. Um, you can see in the back there that it's called a chipper wave. And we hold patent pending for this one, actually. The, uh, the uh, chipper wave actually releases a wave of coolant down the back of the machine and washes the, the loose chips right down into the auger. And then the auger carries it out for us. So um, during that process, we, we save so many man hours. Nobody likes to climb into a machine. Like, I've seen the guys do it, and I don't want to do it either. So. This is a very elegant and easy to install method that takes care of all of that. Yeah, it uses the coolant that's already in the machine. It's just, it's an add-on. It's a really easy install. Um, doesn't take very long. It works for lots and lots of different machines. Yeah, so if anyone's interested in those, the, uh, if you go to the website at www.steedspeed.com and look for the chip away and you'll see it on there. And if you have any questions, feel free to call us at any time and we'll explain how it works and what, which applications it works for. What goes into it and why we have a 12-week wait period for product right now. Because I get asked that all the time, like, can't you just buy more machines? Why don't you get a bigger shop? But we have to train people. You know, it's hard to find tradespeople in the Okanagan. It is. If we were in Alberta, we'd probably be able to expand a lot quicker, but we want to live here, so. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So this is my contribution to the shop with all these lovely, expensive CNC machines. I decided we needed some levity in here and to remind people to have fun at work. Because you know what? We come here every day and we give it our best, but at the end of the day, we've got to have some fun too, so. We uh, occasionally have, may have a dance break. <laughs> to me, though, it feels like a tiny shop still. You know, I, and I think a lot of our customers think we're in this big, really expensive facility, and it's pretty small, and it's very effective for what we've got. We've made every square foot count in this place, you know, because overheads and everything. You don't want to be passing that on to your customer, extra overheads that you don't need. But, you know, considering where we started, in the carport with Lane bending down, cleaning out the machines and then we moved from there to a double car garage and we had two machines in there which was interesting you know I had to get permission from all the neighbors to run a machine shop in a in a residential neighborhood <laughs> and then we moved to an acreage and had three or four machines in that one and that was our last place before here and uh, here we've just completely filled this place up now so yeah Humble beginnings, but we've made it really work, but it's so much harder work to get to this point. Just don't give up, would be my advice. You know, you can start anything and start in your garage if you need to and just keep building and just keep paying back into the business and growing it and becoming more and more stable.